All right. Hopefully this won't be better. Sorry about that. I uh, had a little confusion last stream. I'm going to do this one again. This one's going to be bigger, better, uh, more informative, and I apologize again. I'm not feeling that great. Uh, I wasn't able to do a two-hour non-sequitur show stream today. No possible way I can sit through it. Uh, I just had a really rough night, ate something that didn't agree with me, and so I'm not feeling the greatest. Um, I apologize for that, but I wanted to kind of stream anyways uh, on this. So I was like, eh, this won't be very long, hopefully. Uh, this is to help people understand how to build a proper semiotic square of opposition with atheism and theism. Um, if you know of any other way to build it, by all means, that's my argument. Uh, show me, because I have people telling me that uh, my symbiotic square is wrong or my argument's wrong. But unfortunately, as usual, um, not a single one of them actually demonstrates their, their claim. So uh, I find it odd when people say you're wrong, but they won't actually demonstrate your claim using actual well, you know, evidence. Um, this is going to be the, 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 the basis by which we're going to build the symbiotic square of opposition. This is the relationships, and, but this is a Burgess Jackson's notation. Um, and I'm going to use that pretty much for what, um, what I'll be doing here. So uh, make sure everybody can see this at my screen sharing. I'm using older OBS, so I haven't used this in quite some time. Um, hopefully it'll work just fine, but... Uh, uh, I think I'm still showing the wrong thing here. So let me whiteboard for collaboration. Hmm. Why is it still showing that? Let me check one thing because it shouldn't be showing that one. Bigger and better, but I still can't get it right. All right, I just had to reset it. All right, let's let's start let's start it off. All right, so building a square of opposition. Uh, again, these are going to be logical relationships. The the, the uh, semantics really makes no difference. Actually, it just it doesn't make a difference at all. You can label anything you want. You can call anything you want. The the problem is 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 what you run into by doing so. But as far as the actual Logic, logic doesn't care what you label stuff. The logic cares about the logical relationships. And so a semiotic square of opposition has certain relationships that it has to follow. So we're going to draw those relationships by using these little arrows. We're going to draw a square. And if it's a rectangle, I get it, but it's it's supposed to be a square. But we're going to call it a square, even though we, yes, it is a rectangle. It's just easier to see. So we're going to draw the square of opposition with these lines here. We're going to draw two top lines. We're going to make that without the arrow, though, and we're going to make this one. No, nope, we're going to make it dotted. Yep. And we're going to draw the bottom one. Oh. Then we'll explain what they are. We're going to make that a little different dotted. We're going to draw a couple diagonals here. Oh, no, nope, don't want to move that. This shouldn't have an arrow. There we go. We're going to draw a couple diagonals. And again, yes, I know it's a rectangle. I get it. Just call it a square. I have a little bit of a imagination. Another line here. Yep. Oh, wait. No, this one. There we go. All right. So that's going to be our, our square. So the way the square of opposition works is that each corner has a certain relationship to one of the other corners, either by implication or by being what's called contradictions. A contradiction is where it cannot be true and false at the same time. The top here are called contraries. Well, these top and bottom are called contraries, but the top one is, is just known as a contrary. The bottom one is known as a subcontraries, but they're, but, they're, but they're both the former contraries. Um, and that's going to be, again, logical relationships. The way a contradiction is set means that uh, for any given value, you cannot also have the negation of that value. So you have P and not P as a contradiction, right? Not P and not P is always going to be false by necessity. And then P or not P is going to be always be true by necessity. That's a disjunction. So these relationships are going to be biological uh, relationships by what we mean by a contrary and a subcontrary. Uh, a contrary is going to be something that can be the case where if one is true, the other is false. Both can be true, but both can't be false. And a subcontrary is going to be the case where if one is true, the other is false. Both cannot be uh, 
false, but both uh, both, both cannot be true, both cannot be false. Both cannot be true, but one but both can be false. There we go. Subcontrary, both can be false, contrary, both can be true on the top. So let's start off with a proposition. And again, this will work for any single proposition. It doesn't really matter. But since we're doing atheism and theism, uh, let's assume the proposition is just God exists. It's gonna make it very simple. God exists. Doesn't matter which God, doesn't matter if God gods, just gods, 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 goddesses. I don't care. Okay, the, this, just assume this means at least one God exists in the universe, okay? Because when you start getting bogged down in the weeds about what do you mean by God, which gods, I've just, you've lost me, I don't care. Just, this is a proposition that there is at least one God in the universe, so the number of set of gods that exist in the universe is at least one. All right, okay, it doesn't matter if it's a theistic God, deistic God, pantheistic God, I don't care what you want to call it, you believe there's at least one God. If you want to call a pencil a god, whatever, I don't care, but you believe there's at least one god in the universe, okay? We good, we good so far? Awesome. Hey, look at all these people. Hi, uh, April, how are you? Quadrilateral, yes, yeah, it's a, it's a, this is a really bad polygon of opposition, yes. By, by, but it most, most certainly is. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some of the logical relationships here, because again, the people that are criticizing my paper in one of the Facebook groups, Three, at least three of them had no clue what the heck I was talking about. They were just, just could not do a square of opposition if their life depended on it. So this is my tutorial for them so they can watch it and understand how to do a proper square. So we're going to, we're going to put the logical relationship with the predication of belief, which is basically just, you accept something to be the case. You're convinced. Doesn't mean you're sure. Doesn't mean you're positive. It just means you believe proposition is true. So this believes, believes P. Very simple. Again, don't get bogged down in the nuances, okay? Believes P, think of it as uh, you're convinced P. There are some minor differences across the board on some of these epistemic states as to do with esoteric forces and what you're, you're conveying. It's irrelevant for the square, just believes P. That's it, okay. So we're gonna label this first corner here, this particular predication, which is beliefs, and then the proposition, believes P. So this is how we're gonna draw this is how we're going to label the square of opposition using logic. If you look at the the way the square of oppositions all set up, they all going to have the same um, relationships to each other, meaning that one corner is going to have a specific relationship to another corner. In this particular case, the top corner here, the top right corner, let me move this here. This top right corner here is always going to be the negation of the proposition of this one, the negation of the assertion. Not the negation of the predication, but the negation of the proposition. So you have P and not P. Okay? So this one right gonna be here is going to be the negation of that proposition. I'll show you why it has to be that way. We're going to call that believe not P. Believes P is false. This is the same thing as believes P is false. So if you believe not P, you believe uh, P is false. You disbelieve P. Disbelief means belief. It means a belief in negation. This right here is the is the um, contrary of this. The reason why it's not a, a negation on the, prop is, uh, the the predication is because a person doesn't have to hold to both of these. You can be someone who doesn't believe P nor believe not P. Therefore, both these can be false. And again, according to the beliefs, right? We're relating it to the belief. Somebody who has no opinion either way would hold both of these to be false as far as they don't have the belief that P is true and they don't have the belief that P is false. This is what I go into in myopic detail, my paper, because we're talking about the truth tables of the beliefs. So, and we're assuming a rational agent as well here, right? Because sure, in particular, what's called peculiar reasoning or other forms of, of reasoning, you can, you can believe in a contradiction, right? But unfortunately for a rational reaser, reasoner, um, you can't do that. So you can't believe P is true and believe P is false at the same time rationally. Is it logically possible? Yeah, but it's not the same thing as being epistemically possible. You cannot believe P and not believe P at the same time. That would be a logical contradiction. But there are paradoxes out there called Morse paradox where you essentially hold com conflicting beliefs or even have di cognitive dissonance where you hold conflicting beliefs. So that's why these are called contraries on the top. Okay. So this right here being a, a negation of the proposition is going to be labeled B not P.
And if you look on the if you look on the actual sh uh, square, it'll be the assertion, which is p, and the negation of the assertion, which is not p. If you look at if you look at a, a, a square uh, uh, opposition, you'll see that here assertion and the negation of the assertion. See. So, with that said, we now establish the top of the square. There's no other way you can logically put that. If you know of another way, please tell me. Because if you have the assertion, and the negation of the assertion is not P. Also, if you look at Burgess Jackson's paper in, in, his, in, in the uh, Philosophia work, uh, he has the same thing, but he uses BSG, BS, not G. Where he's just saying the subject believes G, or the subject believes... Um, uh, the subject believes G, and the other one is the subject believes not G. Same thing. So BS not G just basically means subject believes not G rather than just B not P, which is just believes not P. So in other words, he's putting in what's called an indexical. You can have BAG where agent believes G, where G is a proposition God exists. You can have BAP where the agent believes proposition is true. Uh, these are just these are just letters that represent something. A is agent, S is somebody or someone usually. So I don't really care which you use. It makes no difference. I'm just making it simple. I'm leaving out the indexical. But the logical ne ne necessities are going to be the same. So, so then we look at the bottom corner here. This bottom corner is going to be the negation of this one. So if this is S1, this is negation of S1. What's the negation of S1? Well, it's going to be not BP. Now, you can, you can do it this way. Right, if S is S equals BP, then it'd be negative X or, or negation of S, uh, and so S is just BP, which is the same as just this. These are the these are logically the same thing. Okay, so for this corner, I have uh, BP and then a direct contradiction of B of not BP. That means that a person cannot hold the proposition true and not hold the proposition true at the same time. That is a contradiction. Right, you either believe. Or you do not believe. That's a logical contradiction. That is a dichotomy. So, that sets up that contradiction from this diagonal. Now we got to do the contradiction for the other diagonal. So if this is the if this is the the we'll call it S. Um, what do they call it? S two. What is the negation of S two? Well, the negation of this is just going to be negation of this quantity, which is going to be. Negation of B, not P. Okay? It's, it's just B, not P here, and then you just take the negation of that, this whole quantity. No, negations do not distribute. Let me make that very clear. I've had people say this is a double negation. It is not. Negations do not distribute across the pr predication. This is not the same as not, not B, or not, not P. These are just completely different than a double negation. So just because you see two negators doesn't mean it's double negation. These are two different quantities, two different things. If I say not A, not B, are you, you know, and all of a sudden you say, no, it's the same as not, not A. No, of course not. This is, I do not believe P is false. That's not a double negation. That just means you do not hold the belief that P is false. But that is a contradiction to this corner. That's why you have these lines. So now I've set up a relationship where I have believes the proposition does not believe the proposition, believes the proposition is false, and believes does not believe the proposition is false. So far, so good? All right, so this semiotic square of opposition is, is set up logically correctly. Now let's explain um, the relationship between the, the, the subcontrary and the bottom. This right here, this line here is a subcontrary. This means that both of these positions, somebody has to either... Um, uh, be one of them or the other of them or both, but they cannot be neither. That's what sub, that's what remember. Subcontrary, both can be true, but both can't be false. So all people fall into at least one of these. Okay? You cannot you 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 cannot not believe neither proposition. The, or the or negation. Does that make sense? You can, you I, I should say that you have to believe at least one of the um or the other, or neither. Those are your three options. If you believe neither, then the bottom two are true. The, the conjunction of those. So you can, you can hold to both not B, not P, and not BP. Why? Because in that case, you're holding into a position that where you neither accept BP nor accept B, not P. Which means that 
as a subcontrary, that holds to be true. Because both of them cannot be false. Um, you, you must at least be one of these. Or both. That's, that's it. You must be at least one of these or both. Right, so, look at the top. You have the contrary, where you don't have to be either one. And the bottom, you must be at least one. And, and if, you, if you think about it in your head, that will make sense. Um, if you believe a proposition is true, then you don't believe it's false. If you believe a proposition is false, you don't believe it's true. If you have no position either way, you're both of them. So on all three states, you are at least one or both of these. If you believe it true, you're this one. If you believe it false, you're this one. If you don't believe either one of these, you believe both of the bottoms. Okay. So far, so good. All right. So now we explain the, the top, bottom, and the contradictions. Let's explain these implications. These are not logical entailments. These are called subalterations. The way this would work is this is by implication, but for a rational person. If you believe P, you believe the proposition is true, that implies you do not believe it false by implication. Now, again, getting into some weird beliefs, things about having conflicting beliefs, then things are possible. But again, this is why it's not a logical entailment. This is why it's called an epistemic entail, uh, ep epistemic implicature or implication. So in this case, if you believe it false, you don't believe it true. Again, should make simple sense to you. If you don't believe the proposition is true, I mean, if you, if you believe the proposition is true, you don't believe it's false. If you believe it's false, you don't believe it's true. Simple as that. So these are by implication. So everybody that, that falls into somebody who, the position where you believe the proposition um, God exists doesn't believe God does not exist. Everybody who believes the proposition is false doesn't believe God does exist. Right? Because it makes no sense to say, I believe there is no God, but I believe God exists. That would be a contradiction. So the believe in the proposition is true implies you don't uh, excuse me, believe in the proposition is false implies you don't believe it's true. Believe in the proposition is true implies you don't believe it's false. I'm sorry down here by implication. So that's how you set up the symbiotic square of opposition. That's the logical relationships. Um, and I'll, let me make the little uh, legend, and then we can label them as you like. Does not believe a P. And then one more. We got a label. Um, one more. Yeah. And that B is does not believe P. There we go. All right. So that's your little legend right here. Now, let's have some fun. Let's label these. Now, I'll let you guys start labeling them for me. Um, let's pick the top one here. Jeff, what do you want to call this top position here? Now, I will tell you, normally this is referred to as theist. This, that's not controversial, okay? But what do, you, what, do you, what do you want to call it? And something that makes sense. I mean... Would you, would you be okay calling this theist? Is that okay? I mean, who believes the proposition that one God? That's theist? You... Again, we're not talking about classical theism. We're just talking about somebody who believes there's a God. If P equals God, then he is wrong. I don't know what that means. He, P is the proposition God exists. John. Is everybody okay with me calling this theist? Again, I don't know what else you really want to call it. All right. Theist is fine. Thank you, Jeff. So if this position is theist, okay, this right here is theist, what is the negation of that position called? How do you take a negation of something? You put non or um, not, right? So what would be the negation of not PP, Jeff? Would you be okay with calling it not theist? Or non-theist? Would you be okay with that? Because we're just adding not in, in front of the theist label.
I'll wait for the chat to catch up. I'm gonna assume I'm gonna assume so we don't wait forever, Jeff, that uh you're okay with not theist because again, you're just you're just putting not in front of the non theist. Okay, Th not theist, non theist, same thing. Hi, Christopher. Okay, no issues so far. All right. So there's no controversy, I would assume, to anybody in any Facebook group so far. This is how a, 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 a semiotic square of opposition is set up. Um, it's not the same as a canonical square of opposition using categories. P and S, you'll see like all P's are S, not all S are P's. The relationships are the same, but those are called categoricals, right? Categorical statements. And then you have different modes, I, A, O, E, and uh, I'm not using A, O, I, E for Aristotelian logic because that's not the square that I'm showing you. So if, if this position is not theist, let me see if I can move this over. Can I do this in one thing? I probably what do you want to call the top right position, Jeff? What do you want to call somebody who believes the proposition is false? Uh, Shadow Wolf, uh, if you hold all gods are mythological, that means you believe that they don't exist. That means that you, you, have, you have a burden of proof of why you, you hold they don't believe. So, what do you want to call this position here? Somebody who believes this is false. We'll I'll wait for somebody to catch up. What do you want to call this? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, sorry about the delay, guys. Be catching up any second here. Anyone? Anti theist? All right, we'll call it anti theist. You want to call that atheist? It's confusing, but you can you can do it. But I wouldn't call it anti theist. But okay, you're the first person to respond. Anti theist. Atheist or non-theist? Well, they're not the, quite the same thing. We already have a term non-theist down here. Let's, call, let's go with my mod. Let's go with atheist because that's going to be the, the most common understanding. Non, uh, nobody really prefers that as anti-theist. Uh, that makes no sense. Anti-theist is an axiological position. Anti-theism is a position that uh, you hold religion to be harmful to society or the God belief to be hold harmful. But I'm a, I, it would still work, but uh, for clarification, let's, let's call this atheist. Is that okay? So if somebody believes that God doesn't exist, most people would call that an atheist. Does anybody disagree so far? Give it time to catch up. If I say there are no gods, um, is that telling people that I'm atheist? What's a non on the atheist? <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna get into the the other corner here. We we we'll see if this is non theist or not. Well, I mean, if this is atheist, and this corner is going to be non atheist, right? By negation. Right, if this is atheist, it's a non-atheist. Oh, let me put an A in there. And that kind of makes sense, right? So we have these labeled by negations. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. Let's put this underneath here. Suppose in a Facebook group they want to call this also atheist. This is all right, by the way. This is this is this is perfectly fine, right? Non-atheist, non-non. Like not uh, non-theist, non-atheist, right? 
which, by the way, proves you can be something other than a theist or atheist, logically speaking, right? People say you must be one or the other. Now, clearly, by logic, you do not have to be a theist or, law, or atheist set up by the square of opposition. You can do a local necessity, but a local necessity is not a global necessity. Um, this is a mistake that um, uh, Useful Charts makes in his last video. He sets up a lo local necessity rather than a global necessity necessity so he has a scope fallacy um using the terms that we just sh showed here uh, this is how that square is set up meaning there are positions where you're not theist or not atheist right now the conjunction of these two positions would be known as this not bp and not b not p and what is that? That's somebody who's undecided. We call that, I'm, I'm going to label that for you. We call that agnostic. Somebody who's undecided on a proposition. Should not the, uh, should the non-atheist be non-atheist mass non-theist? Not... No, this is negation of this. If this is atheist, then not B, not P is not atheist. Because again, you're just adding not in front of the, the label here. Theist, not theist. Atheist, not atheist. Right? So you're just putting a negator here, that's all. So what's the negator of the, the, the semantic label of atheist? It is not atheist. Semantic label of theist is not theist. This is how it is in philosophy. This is when people say that um, there's no third position, they're just wrong. They're, they're using a local scope rather than a global scope. And they're just saying, hey, uh, theist or dog, not a theist, then you're a dog. But I mean dog to mean not theist, because all they're doing is what you call a semantic substitution. They're just calling not theist by some other word that means to them not theist. It could be dog. Theist or dog. This right here is a contradiction. This right here is a dichotomy. There is no middle ground between theist and not theist. There is a middle ground between theist and atheist set up this way because you now have a position where you have neither. You have none instead of not. Oh, you're right. Okay, how's that? Better? And this is exactly the logical relationships that Dr. Demi uses. These are the logical relationships that I use from Dr. Demi. Should everything, should everything that's not theist be not theist? Well, that depends. These two bottom here would be not theist, not atheist. Right? Not, these three positions are non-theist. These three positions are non-atheist in, in, in a, a normal setup. So this is the only theist position. This is non-theist. This is non-theist. This is non-theistic um, because none of these positions hold to, to BP. So if BP means believes God uh, is theist, then all other positions where you do not have this is non-theist. So these are all non-theist. Yes. They're also non-atheist. Now, what, what happens in these Facebook groups, this is where they go wrong. They want to label this bottom position down here, atheist. They want to say, oh, no, I, I just don't believe. I want that to be atheist. All right, well, let's see what happens when you do that. This is where, this is where you set up, by semantic, semantic substitution, a local necessity by di dichotomy rather than a global necessity. So if I just going to call this atheism, Now I have a false dichotomy between theism and atheism. That I Well, it's not false locally. It's actually true locally. Because using this term, locally, you can either be theist or atheist now. Which would include this. This is a subset of, of, of this. Strong as a subset of weak. But the problem you're running into is you've now eliminated this position. Because all you're doing is redefining this as this. You're just saying non-theist equals atheist. Well, okay. Well, now you've set up a dichotomy where you must be either theist or atheist. You've it's assumed the agnostic position. This is when people are saying atheists assume agnostics. This is what they mean by this. This is the logical move that they make that makes it dishonest. Because they are just randomly, arbitrarily saying, I want this to mean atheist. Okay, well, if you do that, now you've set up not a 
just a dichotomy between theist and not theist. You've set up a dichotomy between theist and atheist locally. And that's like saying, and I keep on using the same um, analogy, you can have duck or chicken for dinner. Well, you don't want duck, you get chicken by disjunctive syllogism. We all know there's more meats out there than duck and chicken. There's pork, there's elk, there's, you know, beef. But locally, as a, as a modal scope on the necessity, you can only have d duck or chicken. Why? Because I only have duck or chicken in the fridge. So it's not logically possible to have anything other than duck or chicken if those are your only two options. But globally, there are other options. This is why you have to be careful of a scope fallacy. When you're talking about necessities, you have to understand whether you're talking about necessities within the scope of the argument. This is a, a disjunctive syllogism between dis, two disjuncts. P or Q, not P there for Q. Okay, that's logically valid. But it doesn't have to be a necessity since there are other things that you can instantiate P and Q with. But if I say you must have duck or chicken, there are no other options. Now I'm limiting you. I'm restricting what you can have. And so by necessity, if you can't have, don't want duck, you get chicken. But that is a local necessity. So what they're doing is they're restricting us to a local dichotomy between theist and atheist, which is, by the way, dishonest. An agnostic is a non-theist and an agnostic is a non-atheist. If you look at agnostic, it's the bottom part of these. It is the conjunction. It goes right here. I can't type today. Agnostic would be this right here. The conjunction of these two. Does not believe the proposition is true. Does not believe the proposition is false. An apatheist can be a theist or a theist. Or it doesn't matter. An apatheist can say, look, I'm a theist. I just don't care if it's true or not. I mean, it, it's again, doesn't really matter. These are, uh, ap apatheism is, is more of a positional attitude than it is a disposition. There's a slight nuance between an epistemic disposition and a propositional attitude. I mean, a non-propositional attitude, like a, uh, a, just a, an epistemic attitude. Uh, fear is something that uh, is an attitude. It's not a proposition, right? Um, well, nah, fear would be propositional. Yeah, that because that's a that's a, a intentional verb. Um, when we say I don't care, that's not an intentional verb. That's a, a a state of mind. That's a psychological state. I don't care. So it's more of an attitude. So um, again, so when they they put this to atheism, all they're doing is just subsuming the agnostic, and they're dishonestly just renaming this. But look what happens when you do this. So you have now you have atheist here, and you have atheist here. We're going to call this atheist. So now, any either person, either person is an atheist. Whether you believe God exists or you don't believe God exists, you are an atheist. Right? All right, well, if you do that, the theist can come over here and say, well, if you call this subalteration from here atheist, I can call this theist. It's symmetrical. It's the same move. I'm just saying that non-atheist means theist. So if you're not an atheist, you're a theist. So if you don't have the belief God exists or doesn't exist, you're a theist. So a, a theist can say, look, you don't hold the belief there are no gods. That's, the, that's a theist to me. Same thing as the atheist is doing. It's the exact same move. And if you don't allow it, that's special pleading by definition. By definition. That's what special pleading, allowing you know something by excluding somebody else from doing it for the same reasons. And this is this is where I get it to my paper where this is a semantic collapse because now you have the term theist down here, the term atheist down here, and agnostic all mean the same logical position. Because if you are an atheist here, if you're in the bottom right corner, you do not have the belief that the P is true, but you don't have any positive belief. You don't believe the proposition is true. The only other position for you is here. So if you do not believe P is true and you don't believe it's false, it, you, your only other position is here, which means you do not believe it's true and you do not believe it's false, which means that you're agnostic on the proposition. Does that make sense? Because there's no other options. Those are no other logical options. So this position here without being here is the same as being here without being here 
which is the same as being both of them. All non-theists in this here, in this category down here are also non-atheist. It's just it's just simple logic. This is why this is what I say when I people call the weak positions right weak atheism. When I say weak atheism, weak theism, and agnosticism is the same logical position. This is why because if you want to call this weak atheism and this weak theism, they're the same logical position if you don't have any po positive belief, and that's proven by logic too. I've done that, but we'll assume you you you'll believe me on that. Um, but no atheist is B, not P. Well, yeah, they are. Believes the proposition false. If somebody believes the proposition is false, that's people would call that atheist. Not not theism isn't the same as atheism. I've just shown why. Not theism is the negation of theism. You're just semantically instantiating this with atheist. You're just changing the term. But non theism, atheism is not the same thing. Atheism is a subset of non theism. If you look at the actual um, logic. Um, Oslan says, agnostics think there could be a God, therefore they're theistic. Could be, it doesn't matter. You could think anything could be. That has no relevancy to what you do believe. I could believe um, there could be a, a, a God. That doesn't make me theistic at all. It's possible, possibilities do not make wh what your beliefs are. It's possible that, that, that flying pigs could fly out of my ass, spit silver dollars, and fart rainbows. But I believe it's not going to happen. But it's it's logically possible. It's just not biologically possible. So. And you can pick any spot you want. You don't have to hold any spot. There's, there's no one claimed that. Yeah, you don't have to pick any specific spot. It just means that... It, but you, you do have to follow the logic. If you start here, you're a theist. To be logically rational, you can't be here. Because it's a contradiction. You can't be here... Because it's a contrary, and both con and contraries both cannot be true at the same time. You can be here. So if you believe the proposition is uh, true, you don't believe it's false. This is why this is a subset of this. If you're here, you can't be here because it's a negation. You can't be here because it's a contrary. Both can't be false. Oh, excuse me, both can't be true. You can be here, though. This is why this is a subset of this. So if you believe there's no God, that's a subset of people that don't believe. So this position can only allow you to be here. This position only allows you to be here. So that deals with the top. If you're in this position on the bottom, okay, work backwards. Where can you be? Well, I can't be over here because it's negation. I can be here if I'm a theist, but I can also be here as well and have no position either way. So this corner, you can be here or you can be here. This corner, well, I can't be over here because that's a negation. I can be this corner or I can be this corner as well. Okay. And again, by logic, if you don't hold this position, the only other position is here. So if you hold this bottom position, you must either hold to the top as well, on the right-hand side, or the bottom left. You can't just be stuck in this position. It's ambiguous. Because if you are not BP, you're either BP or not BP. This is right here. This is where people say, well, weak atheism is not an actual position. They're right. Now, can you see my mouse? This right here is not an actual position because if you are not BP, you must be either this or this. You cannot be this over here because of the contradiction. But if you do not believe P, is it because you believe it's false, which means that you're here and here? Or it's because you're here and you have no position either way. So this right here represents a, a position that just doesn't make sense to say, I don't believe God exists as a position because... If the follow-up question is, okay, are you this or that? If you don't believe God exists, okay, is it because you believe it's false or you have no position either way? See, this is a non-position. This is why also it's by sub-alternation and by impl implication. This is why when people say that this is an atheist position, it's confusing because you can't just be here. You can't just say this is atheist. Okay, if that is... Um, are you an atheist that believes strong atheist or you have no position either way? If you have no position either way, you are assuming agnostic, which is dishonest. See my point? The only, no, the only corner that's exclusive are the top positions. Uh, well, they're not even exclusive because this right here implies this, this implies this. So there's always going to be some kind of implication. 
This, if you're here, that implies you're here. If you're here, that implies you're also here. If you're here, you can either be here or here. And if you're here, you can either be here or here. This is why this is ambiguous. When people say atheism is merely a lack of belief, I have logically demonstrated to you, by demonstration, it is ambiguous. Because it doesn't tell you whether you're here or here. It doesn't tell you whether you actually believe or you have no position either way. So, thank you to my TED Talk. Um, if you have any questions, I will open the floor. Um, if you see any errors, let me know. I think it's correct. Uh, but now you can see why if you allow atheists to, to take over this corner of the subalteration and call it atheist rather than non-theist, the problems you run into. One, you create a, a, a local dichotomy rather than a global dichotomy. And two, the theists can make the same move and say, I want the, um, the subalteration of theist, but BP to be not theist. Or to me to be a non-atheist, which would be theist. Yeah, you're always picking two spots. Yeah, you're always going to have two spots, right? Because by implication, if you pick here, you have two spots, this and this. If you pick here, you have two spots, here and here. If you pick here, you have two spots, but you don't know which one it is. There's no way, there's no way by using this chart to tell a person where you're at. Here, you can, you can say, I'm here. So by logical implication, you're here. Oh, I'm here. I have a logical implication. I'm here. So the top two, you can always tell what a person is. The bottom two, you can't. If you're here, you can't tell whether somebody's here or here. It's ambiguous. If you're here, you can't tell whether somebody's here or here. It's ambiguous. Lack of belief in atheism is ambiguous. It's silly. More and more people are coming around to, exp to, 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 uh, to understand this. More and more people are fighting back by these really, really non-philosophical atheists that are just spewing this nonsense for years. Explain to them the logic. Explain to them. Yes, my paper's correct. Um, but they, they'll never be able to demonstrate otherwise. But my challenge is to invite any, any atheist out there to rework the square of opposition using logic to show that how this would be incorrect. You, you can label anything you want. I don't care. But I'm more care about, I care more about the logic. Show me that this is not set up right with the logic. But you can, you can call these things anything you want. You know, if you want to call it anti-theist, okay, now I have, the, have anti-theist here, and I have theist here. So the person who said, let's try that out. The person who says, let's call this anti-theist. We'll, we'll show you the problem with this. Remember somebody said, let's call this anti-theist? Not really a problem, but now, okay, this, <clears throat> this now becomes theist here, right? Because this is a negation of this. So it, you can use this term. It works just fine, right? It, it, you, just, you just call this uh, anti-theist as well. But now you have a problem. Can everybody see the problem when I call this position anti-theist as I'm using the top? Someone, sh Somebody can see the logical problem here? We'll wait for somebody to catch it. This is why I didn't want to use anti-theist at the beginning, but if, uh, if you want to use anti-theist to mean this position here, okay, so the negation of anti-theism is, 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 would be, well, it'd be not anti-theist. I guess. Let's see if we can scroll this down. Ah, not anti theist. Ah. But you also have the theist calling a theist, right? Because they want. Well, I guess eh, maybe that would work. Yeah, that. Antitheist, not antitheist, antitheist. Yeah, the pro. Yeah, I, you still have the contradiction. Because now you have antitheist meaning here, and now you have antitheist meaning here. Now you have a contradiction. See the contradiction? I was hoping somebody could see it, but I don't think they can. If theist is here, then the contradiction of this is, is non-theist, right? But now I have, I have not anti-theist. Well, no, I guess it would work. No, I guess you could do it that way. Non-anti-theist and anti-theist 
So, let's see where that. Is. Yeah, yeah, you could do it that way. No, there's no contradiction. I, you would just be you'd it'd be odd, but you would be a you'd be somebody who's not anti-theist and not not anti-theist. This is why you shouldn't use terms like anti-theist for this. It just makes no sense because you're you're not an anti-theist. Um, but, but the problem is, is that, um, over here, not anti-theist. Yeah, that just, it just looks off to me using anti-theist. I mean, I suppose you could, it's just, it's, if you're not an anti-theist. That could be theist and anti-theist at the same time. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm just going to go back to theist. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Let me call this atheism. <laughs> there you go. That's better. All right. All right. Anyways, um, anybody see any problems with this? This is where I'm going to leave it because um, this is where I want people to see the the problem with calling these things atheist. What what it does is it adds ambiguity. Uh, my challenge is for an atheist to show the square of opposition with any other logical way of doing it. Um, everybody must be in two corners. Yes. I agree with that. You're, if you're in this corner, you're in this corner and this corner. If you're in this corner, you're in this corner and this co corner. If you're in this corner, there's where it's confused because you don't know whether you're in this one or this one. And if you're in this corner, it's confusing because you don't know whether you're in this one or this one. This is why this is ambiguous. This is exactly why uh, atheists who want to call not theist atheism is, is just, they're being logically inconsistent. Um, at least as far as uh, being precise. And they're setting up a dichotomy that um, makes a local necessity. You're, they're saying you must be theist or atheist. There are no other options, but there are other options globally. There's agnostic. No, no, we're setting it up this way. We're going to say you're a theist or a dog. You're not a dog, then you're a theist. You're not theist, you're a dog. That, that's, that's exactly what they're doing. That's the same local necessity they're making. You're either a dog or a theist. There are no other options. Okay, well, I'm not a dog. That makes me a theist, I guess. But I'm not a theist either. So there's a problem there. Why? Because globally, it's not true. Because all they're doing is saying theist or not theist. And they're just calling not theist something else. So they're, they're meaning dog to mean not theist. Okay, yeah, either I'm theist or I'm not theist. I'm going to call that a dog. So I'm a dog. Even though I'm not a real dog, I'm just calling it a semantic dog, which means not theist. See the problem with semantics? Even though you have dog to represent the term not theist, it's confusing because that's a semantic label. It's a signifier. So when they say theist or dog in that context, dog is not referring to a fuzzy animal. Dog is referring to non-theist because that's the word they're using for non-theist. So they're, when they're saying you must be a theist or a dog, they're just saying you must be a theist or, or not a theist because they're meaning dog to mean non-theist. Same thing they're doing with atheism. You could be like, oh, well, that's stupid using dog to mean non-theist. Yeah, same thing for using atheism for non-theist. It's just a word that they're using to smuggle in that dichotomy that's already existing between theist and non-theist and saying you must be theist or not theist, but I'm going to call not theist dog, so therefore you must be theist or dog. Well, I'm not taking the label of a dog. Well, dog just means non-theist. Well, no, I'm not taking the label of dog. It's the same thing. Same exact thing. So, the way it works in philosophy is neither of these positions would be theist or atheist. Neither of these bottoms would be. It would only be theist. This is called a, a, in order to be an atheist, the necessary condition is not to believe. The sufficient, sufficient condition is to believe there are no gods. The necessary condition for theists is you do not believe that it's false. The sufficient condition that is, it is you believe it's false. This is the difference between necessary and sufficient conditions. So theists, the, so theism, um, 
The sufficient condition is the belief that God exists. The necessary condition is that you do not believe is false. There we go. Fix my isms. But this is how it all works out. This is why no one's able to disprove my paper without using a square of opposition, because they would have to show how the square of opposition is false. If they, if they want this bottom to be atheist, which they're arguing, that makes it ambiguous because, again, you have to have in two positions. If you're here, what other position corner are you? You have to be one of the other corners. There are no logical, logical options. Either If you do not believe the proposition is true, it is because you're what they would call a strong atheist, or you have no position either way. But these are two different positions. This is why there should be two different words to describe them. If you do not believe P is true, because you believe it's false, we call that atheist. If you do not believe P is true because you have no position either way, we call that agnostic. These two words have value because they hold meanings for two different positions. The agnostic has no position either way. The agnostic has made up their mind and calls it false. This is what I call the this is what I call semantic collapse. By having this position and down here be the same position as this and this being having the same words as this meaning this, that's semantic collapse. Because now you've, you, you've, you, you've eliminated the agnostic position and you have no position for the people that have no position either way. That's dishonest. That's dishonest. All right. Hope you guys appreciate, um, hope you appreciate the uh, tutorial. Let me know how your square of oppositions work out. If you find any, uh, square of opposition where you can do the logic differently with beliefs, let me know. Um, but you, I, you could literally do it with any, any definition you want as far as um, your proposition, right? You can say color, the color sky is blue. It doesn't matter because this is S1, negation of S1, S2, negation of S2. And whatever you make S1 or S2, it, it, it just, it'll work out the same. See, S1, S2, negation of S1, negation of S2. So if this is your guideline. Go ahead and make your squares. Let me know how they work out for you. And uh, I'm going to lay back down because, again, I'm not feeling well. This was a lot longer than I expected. But if anybody um, doesn't understand my paper and they say my paper is wrong, um, I request you show them this video and ask them, okay, how do you make a square of opposition where um, it would be any different? Who should I talk with? And, and like I said, in my paper, you can get rid of the semantic definitions. They're relevant to the paper. It just shows that the semantic collapse, but the logic is what's important. And I set forth the logic using Demi's system. And Dr. Demi did read my paper. He had no errors, with, no substantial issues with it. Um, if anybody want to, does anybody want to talk about this later? Just have them message me. Um, but I'm, I'm really... I'm really doing this for a specific Facebook group that just didn't understand what a square of opposition is. And they think they can refute me without doing one. And I just, I throw the BS flag on that. I'm sorry. If you cannot create a square of opposition, how the hell are you going to show my papers wrong? Yeah. Fortunately, I'm going to hide you on this channel. I thought you were, I thought you were actually hex and I wasn't sure. Now I know that you are. Uh, somebody said that cannibal fresh is um, a, a, a troll. And I believe that it is uh, somebody who I deleted a long time ago. So, um, please do not come around here again. I don't want nothing to do with you. Um, I've hidden you multiple times. I find it disturbing when you go to people's chats that do not want you around under names. And I know that's you because I was told that was you. I just wasn't sure. Um, have a little bit of a self-respect. Go to where you're, you're, you're wanted. Um, it's very disrespectful to the people trying to learn something when you go to troll on a group where you've been blocked. This is what I have had to deal with, though. This is what I'm saying. This is why people have a bad, bad impression of atheists. You know, they tell people say, "Look, you know, atheists are bad people." Well, some of them are, and the people that go to other people's chats where they know they've been blocked, that's a bad person because they've been they've been um, blocked for years. They know that I want nothing to do with them, and they keep coming around. That's harassment. So, be, please be mindful of that mon uh, uh, mods um, that when I, I remove somebody. Um, they're, they're probably somebody that I've blocked multiple, multiple times on, on fake accounts. So, yeah. I mean, who does that though? I mean, these people are sick. These people are just, are disgusting. I mean, they, they, they'll troll with, just because they want to come around and, and, um, 
you know, mess up a video. And that that's what I'm saying. This is why I stopped hanging out with that group. That group was doing crappy things like this. Don't be don't be unethical like trolls going around to people's videos. No, don't do be like that. I mean, who who wants who wants to be like that? It's amazing. Yeah, sorry, a little bit of tangent, but I wanted to, I was I wasn't sure about that. I, I was like, oh man, you know, I think that is somebody I've already blocked because they I was told it was. Um, and yep, sure enough, they mentioned their name. Yep. So, yeah. Um. Anyways, I'm gonna end this. I want to appreciate you guys from watching. Sorry for the trolls. Um. It, it's just, it's just, it just it proves my point though, right? It proves that I've been harassed for five years by the same people. They still come around to my videos, even though I've asked them not to, even though if I said, I want nothing to do with you, you're disgusting human beings. Um, stay away from my, 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 uh, chats. So. All right. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. And I'm going back to bed. Good night.